Hi guys, Lee Burkhardt here with Reef Photo and Video, and welcome to our video series Hands-On with Reef. Today I'm very excited to be talking to you guys about filming underwater macro. We're often asked, what kind of gear do I need to shoot underwater macro video with? So today, I thought we'd take a closer look at some of the equipment involved and what kind of benefits this gear offers for shooting this type of footage. So what exactly is a macro lens? Simply put, it's a dedicated lens that's optically designed to focus within extremely close focusing distances usually about 12 inches, and typically has a magnification ratio of 1 to 1. You can often find a variety of lens mount choices for just about any camera. In addition to these dedicated camera lenses, we also have underwater macro optics from companies like Nauticam, Saga, SubC, and Inon. What all of these have in common is that when combined with the camera lens, they minimize the minimum focusing distance even further allowing us to shoot closer and get a tighter frame on small subjects. These are also great additions for those of you with compact cameras that have fixed, built-in zoom lenses and cannot attach a dedicated macro lens. Now some of the underwater macro optics, such as the Nauticam SMC line or CMC line, even add additional magnification on top of changing the minimum focus distance so that you can shoot some extreme super macro. They're also optically designed for underwater imaging, so we've seen big improvements in terms of sharpness, contrast, and color with these compared to other brands in the market. So there's lots of different options out there, guys, and to be honest, way too many to cover in a single video. But if you're in the market and shopping for one and looking for some recommendations, just contact us and we can make some recommendations based on your specific needs, budget, and equipment. We also have a bunch of articles we put together that cover many of our top lens suggestions for underwater imaging, and I've included links for all of these below in the video description so you guys can take a look. The first and perhaps most important piece of equipment aside from the camera lens is a solid underwater tripod. Even cameras with some of the best image stabilization and divers with excellent trim and buoyancy are likely to be disappointed when filming with some of these macro lenses handheld. The benefit of the underwater tripod is that it will add stability to your footage and get rid of that nasty camera shake. Now many of you may already have some kind of land-based tripod and you can use it, but we don't recommend it. These tripods are often not designed for underwater use and typically within less than a dozen dives, you'll trash the internal springs and components with saltwater corrosion. One of the best options we've seen in the market is the tripod plate by Zen Underwater. It features a universal design with slotted quarter 20 thumb screws, meaning that it can be attached to just about any compact, mirrorless, or DSLR underwater housing. Often when shooting macro during a muck dive, your subjects are going to be either very low to the ground or completely in it. What's so great about this tripod plate is that it allows you to get your camera and lens very low to the ground, and often at eye level with your subjects. You'll notice there's three ball mounts located around the plate, and these are meant for attaching your tripod legs. You can use standard double ball arms and clamps, and many of you may even have some extras of these lying around. Or you could also consider using these extendable carbon fiber ball arms from Inon. 
These are actually one of my favorite options as they're super lightweight, come in a variety of sizes, and they can be either shortened or lengthened while you're underwater. We actually put together a short first look video on this very same equipment a while back that's worth a watch as it explains many of these features in more detail. I placed a link in the video description below so that you guys can check this out. Now one thing to remember is that when using a tripod, you want your underwater camera to be negatively buoyant. The goal is to be able to lay the entire rig down into the sand with your hands off and have it sit firmly in place. If you need to, get rid of those buoyancy arms and use standard ones. Another trick you can do is to use a small two pound weight like this one with a clip attached. Now this can be easily clipped off to your BC while diving and then reattached to the camera tripod when needed for extra stability. Now dealing with focus is perhaps the most difficult thing when it comes to filming underwater macro. We're often using lenses with longer focal lengths, shooting within less than a foot or so of the subject, and because of all of this our depth of field is generally very shallow. In addition, our subjects are often tucked into parts of coral or objects that make it difficult for even some of the best cameras to maintain autofocus. While there are some cameras out there that do a decent job with autofocus, in my experience using a manual focus gear tends to be the much more reliable and easier approach. You'll be able to avoid rather undesirable footage that shows your lens constantly focus hunting, or footage that constantly shows the lens breathing in and out as the subject moves slightly forward or backwards within the frame. If you're using a mirrorless, DSLR, or cinema housing, many manufacturers will offer manual focus gears for the macro lenses you intend to shoot with. If you have a compact camera, check your camera manual as there's often a way to use the control dials to handle manual focus as well. In either case, this is hands down the way to go. With your camera rig weighted down in a fixed position off your tripod, you can easily pull critical focus to exactly where you want on the subject. While doing this, it can be really useful to turn on any kind of features that help you with manual focus. Most modern cameras will have assist tools to help with this, such as a magnify control, focus guides, or even focus peaking. Now on to underwater monitors. Now these are more of a luxury than an essential piece of equipment, but once you've used one, you won't ever want to dive without one. Some housing manufacturers offer options for routing an HDMI or SDI signal from the camera up to an external monitor, and these will really make your shooting experience so much easier. The benefit here is that it allows you to keep your camera very low to the ground while keeping your viewing position elevated and much more comfortable. In addition, you're generally going to have a much larger, brighter screen to work with, and many of these monitors come loaded with all kinds of video assist tools to make your job much easier. If you're a Nauticam user, one of our top recommendations is the Small HD 502 Bright and Nauticam NA502B underwater housing. It features a bright 1000 nit 5 inch screen and is absolutely loaded with assist tools that include exposure assist, framing guides, and focus peaking. It's also compatible with a whole variety of Nauticam's compact, mirrorless, DSLR, and cinema housing lines. We actually did an entire article and video on this a while back that's definitely worth a look. I've included a link below in the video description so that you guys can check this out. We're often asked, do I really need to buy two video lights? Simply put, the answer is yes. As with underwater photography, lighting is everything, and having two lights will open up lots of creative possibilities for you. You can create much more interesting footage. For example, you can use two-point lighting by using one light as a key light with a higher power setting, and the other as a fill light at a lower power setting. This will create more shadows and depth to your underwater footage. Or you can play with things like backlighting, using one light behind the subject and another at a lower power setting in front to just fill in a little bit of the detail on the subject. The creative possibility here, guys, is really endless. Some key things to look for with lights include a high lumen output, we recommend something at least above 3000, 
an accurate CRI, or color render index. The better the CRI rating, the more natural and vibrant your colors will look. And variable power settings. The more options here, the better off you'll be, as this will give you much more control over the lighting. Some of our top suggestions include the Keldon line of lights. They offer an incredible amount of lumens with a compact size, have a very accurate CRI, and a wide 110 degree beam angle with 9 stops of brightness. If you're being more budget conscious, the fixed Neo line makes an excellent value for the money. They're less powerful than the Keldons, but do feature a wide beam angle, brightness settings in 1% increments for lots of control, and excellent color thanks to the accurate CRI rating. If you want a more in-depth look at either of these light options, I've put together some articles and videos on both of these recently. You can find links to all of that content in the video description below. Whatever you decide on, look through your budget and what you can afford, and make sure that you get two of them. Overall, we realize there's lots of equipment out there to help with capturing underwater macro footage, but I hope today's video has been helpful for all of you out there looking into some new gear to make your job easier. Please feel free to leave any questions in the comments section below, or contact our Reef Photo staff directly. We all dive and shoot with a variety of this equipment regularly, and we're happy to offer any kind of insight or experience that we can to help out with the decision making. To check out more of our video tutorials or knowledge base articles, you can visit us at www.reefphoto.com and just click on the learn link along the top of the home page. Well I think that's going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for watching, stay tuned for more cool videos to come soon, and we'll see you on the next one.